So what's the difference between intellectual intelligence and emotional intelligence? Now there are actually eight different intelligences that have been categorized, but today we're going to be looking at emotional intelligence, specifically the book written by Daniel Goleman. So why is emotional intelligence so important? Well, you can tell the difference between a robotic person who knows a lot, but they have very little emotions, and a charismatic intellectual who seems to move a whole audience. And you can also tell it in their bank account, friends, and love lives as well. In fact, Daniel Goleman says that those who have just enough IQ to get into a decent university, but have stellar EQ, are the ones who rake in the most cash. So how can you develop your EQ, and what can you do to cultivate it? So there are five areas of growth you can work on to increase your EQ score, developed by Daniel Goleman. I'm going to go over some topics that revolve around them and how you can work on increasing your emotional intelligence today. So the first is self-awareness, the second is managing emotions, the third is self-motivation, which personally this is an area I could work on. The fourth is empathy, and the fifth is handling relationships. So the first big topic we're going to go into today is called the ventilation fallacy. So there's a stereotypical thought in modern society that to get over your feelings or anger or something like that, we must talk about them. And this helps to some degree to cognitively think about your subconscious feelings, but venting does not help. Yelling, ranting, typing up essays over bitterness, flipping someone off, cesspools of poison as a status update, or any other form of venting method are, according to Daniel's theory, wrong and technically make the situation worse. See, venting when you're angry prolongs your feelings and doesn't help stop them. Goleman and many other studies have proven this. I think venting when you're sad is okay because it's a great way to find out why you're sad and thus you can make the changes you need to to not be sad anymore. But when you're angry, there's usually not much cognitive thinking and it's usually mostly just emotional lizard brain thinking that happens to cause problems down the road. So try not to vent. So the next topic we're going to go over is to try not to ruminate over things. Instead, try to find distractions. So in high school, I used to be very self-conscious about the things I'd say to other people. Like, was I funny? Did, did I sound smart? These meant a lot to me when I was in high school, and I thought about them a lot. Eventually, I started a new hobby. I started weightlifting. Now, this little hobby lasted for probably four to six months, but I lifted good, and almost every single day. And this was a great distraction, but it also built up my physical stature, which physiologically made me more confident. So I distracted myself about what I would say by weightlifting. It's kind of hard to explain, but my confidence increased, and I didn't worry about as much of what I said. I know some people deal with depression and negative thoughts every day. In fact, I dare to say lots of people do. And there is a way around this, because I've been there and I know the environments and thoughts and fears and pain. They only self-feed and they grow and it's hard to get out of. So negative thoughts keep you in the negative mindset. And just like the confirmation bias, they will confirm your sad feelings. According to the availability bias, things that you ruminate on, things that you're constantly thinking about, will stick around easier and they won't go away on their own. So you need to fill your head with new ideas instead. Get some hope by starting a business. Gain some confidence by working out. Do something physically active to distract your brain and raise it to a higher energy level. It can be done. You just have to have the motivation to do it, which is also very important to emotional intelligence and, like willpower, can be strengthened over time. So the next big topic is going to be self-motivation. So self-motivation is obviously closely tied to willpower, and you can cultivate it. Most of the time, passion will drive you to do something. So find that, find something that you have passion in, and you'll likely have tons of self-motivation. For me, at times it has been web development, playing with lasers, weightlifting, and now it's making awesome, helpful videos. So the important thing to this is you have to be very self-aware. You have to know what you can do to motivate yourself. So I'm going to go into a little subcategory. Most people are motivated by one of four things. They all start with M. Money, mating, momentum, or mastery. Of course, money is material things and gaining wealth. Mating is sexual or romantic desire. And this helps if you want to lose weight, weightlift, or get in better shape. Momentum is basically freedom, doing what you want, where you want, and always growing. For me, this channel's momentum is huge. I love waking up and seeing 300 new subscribers or a couple Facebook messages about how I have changed someone's life. It drives me to make more videos knowing I'm making a difference in so many lives. And the last is mastery, which is basically status. And being able to tell others you're a great leader or you know how to program in 8 programming languages or speak in 14 or you're an 8th degree black belt. Find what motivates you and use it to your advantage. So if you've never heard of the marshmallow story, I'm going to sum it up pretty quickly. Basically, they take a whole bunch of little four-year-olds, and they bring them into this room, and they give them two options. One, they can eat a marshmallow right now, 
or two, they can wait until the researcher gets back and have two marshmallows. And they actually videotaped this study. So what they did after probably 15, 20 years, they started and they went back to these people and they were trying to figure out that the people that waited and got the two marshmallows and they practiced delayed gratification, were they more successful? What they found was that after graduation, waiting, having this ability to delay gratification was a better predictor than IQ of their SAT scores. It is also a huge factor of emotional intelligence and future success. So there's also studies that say you can strengthen your willpower and your ability to delay gratification just like a muscle, and also that it gets weak throughout the day and the more you use it, also like a muscle. So the next topic I'd like to go over is that emotions are contagious. So there was this study where they took a volunteer with a high energy level. That is, they were super excited, pumped up, exuberant, and they put them with another volunteer with a low energy level. That is, they were almost depressed. And they sat them in a room for a couple minutes to talk. But before they talked, they filled out a form giving them a qualitative review of their moods. A couple minutes later, and magic happened. They gave the form back to both people, and what they realized was that most people didn't stay the same energy level. In fact, in most cases, the high energy level was transferred to the low energy person, which means that if you're in a slump or a rut and you can't seem to get happy or be excited about life, start hanging around people with lots of energy, lots of drive, lots of people who are ambitious and happy about life, because it's contagious. On the other hand, if you see one of your friends in the dumps, do them a favor and help them out. Start spending more time around them. So the next topic is going to be empathy. So empathy is the ability to feel and react to the emotions of others. Now this is a requirement for being a great leader. And you must know what motivates other people and how to pick someone up effectively when they're in a rut. So knowing other people's feelings, especially if you know them better than they do, will give you an edge and you'll be perceived as highly intelligent in any field. But the best advice I can give you is to talk to lots of people about their feelings on an emotional level and finding out how they tick. So the last topic we're going to talk about is managing relationships. And this topic is kind of hard to go into in this video. So if you want to, check out my other videos. Also check out Gary Vaynerchuk's videos. He has some amazing videos on managing relationships and empathy. Go check them out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, smash that like button below. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more amazing life-changing videos.